Hello everyone, in this video I will be giving a short snapshot of how the Hmong Romanized popular alphabet or Hmong RPA came into existence. I will, will be speaking in English for the rest of the video so that I will be able to reach a broader audience and provide some um, understanding for them. The Hmong first arrived in Laos in 1850 from China, which was under the influence of the Qing dynasty. The Hmong fled China due to persecution and being pushed out. It was during this time that our written language was made into embroidery or bandao to preserve the language in secrecy, which also caused us to lose our writing system. It wasn't until 1953 um, and that the Hmong had their written language. So from 1850 to 1953, the Hmong were preliterate, not having a reading or writing system. Now, I use the word preliterate because our grandparents and our ancestors that lived during that time lived before or existed before um, the Hmong RPA. So that's why they are not. Uh, illiterate, but they were preliterate because the language did not exist during their time. And um, it was also during this time in the early 1950s that many religious groups started sending missionaries into Indochina. The duties of missionaries at that time was to deliver the gospel to various ethnic groups through written text or other means. Uh, which was also a challenge for the missionaries during this time when they were trying to reach the Hmong tribes due to the Hmong not having a writing system. But thankfully, during this time, there was three individuals who came together to create the Hmong RPA, which was Father Berthre. Um, he is a French priest, and I'm sorry if I'm not able to say his name correctly, so I will be using his mom name, which is Sibunyabwa, throughout the video, and also Linwood Barney and William Smalley, both American missionaries. So we will be looking at these three individuals and their background to gain a clearer understanding of how they made this process happen. So Zipli Nepal lived in um, Dongyopu during that time, which was also close to Luo Prabang, or known as Malone. Uh, Zipli Nepal was not only a priest, but he was also an anthropologist, studying various cultures. And in short, he spoke Hmong, and he lived with the white Hmong, and Dong Yupu, and during that time, he also created a writing system using diacritics. Because Hmong is a very tonal language, he used diacritics to specify certain pitch. And diacritics are marks that commands a letter to make a certain sound or pitch. And he used diacritics because he was familiar with them, because in the French, um, language and they also use diacritics for the same reasons as well. So for example, if we wanted to write this is how we will be writing it using Zipunya Ball's way of writing. And moving on to Linwood Barney or also known as Reverend Barney, so keep in mind again that Zipunya Ball lived in Luo Prabang, but south of Zipunya Ball in Siang Kuang was Reverend Barney, who was commissioned by the Christian Missionary and Alliance, or known as CMA. And um, during this time, these two individuals, Zipunya Ball and Reverend Barney, did not have any contact, or during that time, they probably didn't even know of each other, and they didn't know that. Uh, one another was already creating a writing system. So similarly to Zipunya Ball, Reverend Barney lived with the Hmong. So he also lived with the Blue Hmong and spoke the Blue Hmong dialect, which is Hmong Lang. But instead of using diacritics for tonal markers, he used his own version of using numbers. 
So for example, if we wanted to write Gumuote using a Linwood Barney system, this is will be how we will be writing gumu ote using numbers as tonal markers instead of diacritic. And Dr. Smalley was a linguist and also an anthropologist. He was also commissioned by the CMA into Luan Prabha. It was then that these three individuals met to create the Hmong RPA. Because Dr. Smalley was a linguist, he was able to hear um, sounds and spoken words and identify them because he was trained to do so. But if you and I were to do that with a language that we had no knowledge about, it would be very difficult. So what he did during that time was that he examined Sipunya Ba's writing with the diacritics and uh, Reverend Barney's system with the numbers. And after examining both, he concluded that it would be very difficult to use, given that um, the typewriters uh, would not be able to support these two types of writing system. So what happened was that uh, what he did was that he worked with two Hmong individuals uh, from Dongyupu, and their name was Yangya and Hu Ta. So these two Hmong individuals from Dongyupu also worked with uh, Tsubunya Ba. So what happened during this time was that you had two different types of written system, one for the white dialect and one for the blue dialect, one with diacritics and one with numbers, and it was just confusing all around. So what they did was that these two individuals, Yang and Hu, would speak Hmong into Dr. Smalley's ears. And after he heard a word or a phrase, he will then identify the tonal markers using um, the Roman alphabet instead of using diacritics and numbers. So as I mentioned before in the previous slide, an interesting fact about Dr. Smalley was that he didn't speak Hmong, but because he was a linguist, he was trained to hear the difference in sound, and he was able to associate those differences in sound with letters. And you would assume that it took several years or it took these individuals a very long time to create the Hmong RPA, but actually it took them five days. So after five days of working together with Yang and Hu, um, Dr. Smalley Dr. and um, Barney, along with Zihi Blin Yipal, they looked over what is now known as the Hmong RPA, and they agreed that this will be um, the, 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 this written system that will be used for religious groups to print the gospel in Hmong and to distribute them into the Hmong villages. And it was actually the Hmong uh, who converted into uh, these religions that uh, learn how to read and write using the Hmong RPA system first. And uh, we still use the Hmong RP systems now in many churches that exist across this country. Not only that, but the Hmong RPA is also used in Southeast Asia uh, throughout the entire world um, as a Hmong written language. And the Hmong RPA is also what we use in schools today to teach Hmong to students. So it was during this time that um, Dr. Smalley, he was invited to a international Hmong conference in 1995, and he gave a speech. And I just wanted to quote him and share with you this quote because it really resonated with me when I was in the teacher um, um, credential program and when I was also in grad school and which also really inspired me to become a Hmong dual immersion teacher and this is what he said we and by we he meant Dr. Smalley, Reverend Barney and Father Berthre or Tsiplinya Ball we believe that people need the ability to read and write in the first language no matter how many other languages they know they need to read and write in the language of the heart, the language of the home, not just the language of the school. 
They need reading and writing skills in the language of emotions, the language in which they dream and think. The ability to read and write in a foreign language is fine, but it is not enough. Thank you so much for uh, watching this video and it was a very quick snapshot of the history of Hmong RPA but I hope that you find this intriguing and I hope that this quote also resonates and stays with you.